It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Hi folks, Senator John Yudichak uh, from our 14th Senate, State Senatorial District in the state of Pennsylvania is my guest today. And folks, we're going to talk about what's happening in the uh, greater Hazleton area, but also in his district. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have uh, the Senator on the show. Senator, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having us on again. It's always a pleasure. Uh, now the most important thing, how are the girls? The girls are fantastic. We went through our birthday gauntlet where the twins on November 8th turned five and the baby turned one on November 15th and then Sarah turned seven on December 1st. So uh, the birthday gauntlet with Thanksgiving and Halloween and, and now the Christmas holiday. So it's, it's just a great time in the Adichak household. It's, uh, I'm just so blessed. So the ages are what, seven? <clears throat> Seven, five, and one. one. Now, uh, it must be a riot at your house. Uh, it's, it's a treat uh, every morning uh, when the girls are getting up to go to school and, and, uh, and when I get a chance to, to pick them up from school and we get to go to the movies. Uh, that's uh, daddy, uh, daughter, kind of date day and, and we go out to the movies. It, it's just an absolute treat. And they, uh, they of course, uh, they just uh, they tear me up. You know, they, they're, 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 they're a lot of fun. Now, knowing that your life is hectic the way it is, <clears> I mean, you, you spend a lot of time with your kids, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Every chance that, that we get. I mean, I, I try to I get home. There are days, unfortunately, where, you know, I'm, I'm out of town. I'm either in Harrisburg or somewhere somewhere else. We thank God for uh, FaceTime where we can get on and, and make some funny faces at each other thanks to the technology. Uh, but, uh, yeah, try to be present in their life every day, whether it's a phone call, FaceTime, or physically being there. Uh, and, and enjoying them because, uh, you know, uh, just walking through their rooms last night as everybody to bed and just uh, how lucky of a guy am I you know, to have these four great girls. Yeah, they, they, were, they were great days for me with the kids, the, the Sammy and Janine, you know, you'd you know, make sure they said their prayers and then you'd kiss them goodnight and, you know, it was, it was a thrill. You know, being a, a family man and having children and also being in public office, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes you have a different perspective on things you know, when you are a family man yourself and you have children, you have obligations, and just like a lot of people, thousands, hundreds of thousands in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, they have their own concerns and they have children. Do, do you look at things a little differently when it comes to, you know, your laws and, and what you're doing because you are in a situation like that? Sure, it changes your perspective, changes your outlook. There's, there's no question about it. Uh, it's you, you certainly always listen to your constituents and and over the years I've done that folks that have had families but when you become a father when when that relationship uh, and that bond is sealed that you feel responsible for that child's life you feel responsible for the opportunities that they're going to have uh, in a community uh, and you you're concerned about their safety about the quality of their education about the opportunities that they're going to have when they grow up in terms of uh, jobs it, of course, that, that colors my perspective and how I do my job in a different way. I mean, I think that, that really led uh, to the passion that we put in Operation Gang Up with Congressman Barletta when you started to see the trends that uh, the community that we grew up in uh, as kids uh, where you always heard, you know, the quality of life, the communities are safe, the schools are safe, and that's a, that's, that's a huge asset. And many of them, in, in, in most respects, still are. But that 2011 Department of Justice report that said you're, you're starting to become a, a center uh, of attraction for organized gangs and drug traffickers. And, and when you look at those organized gangs and that they're recruiting kids that are 10, 11, 12 years old to bring them into that gang life, that's, that's, when, it, that's when it really hit me. And, and, you, and you think about, you know, my daughter's seven years old, that, uh, you know, in, in three years she, she could be a target of a female gang or, or her classmates. Uh, so that really, uh, that really uh, was the impetus for the work that we're doing, not just to keep my family safe, keep all the family yeah. safe in Northeastern Pennsylvania. But that's what I mean, your, your perspective <clears throat> looks at. So, so when you're looking at Operation Gang Up, um, so the, anytime you have a, a committee which started in 2011, and Daryl Dones was a, a great guest on the show here, you start at assumption and then you start working at okay what was the, the report came out and then you Barletta and uh, Toolhill mm -hmm. decided something had to be done and so you worked in a nonpartisan way which I congratulate you many times for doing that and putting the political bullcrap aside um, when what was the when you started 
okay, and they, now you're saying there's accomplishments made, but when you talk to some people, they said they're still selling drugs here, there's still gangs here, there's still gangs there. What, what kind of um, progress has been made since 2011 to now? The, really the goal was to get the community engaged. That, that was the overall goal. We didn't know if we could change the law. We didn't know if we'd be able to bring more financial resources to the community. But we knew if we worked at it and if we brought in the right people like uh, uh, Dr. Darrell Dones from the FBI Academy and the other great leaders, Chief DeAndre's been terrific here in Hazelden taking part in our forums. In, in every one of those public forums that we have, it came back, the, the phrase force multiplier. You're not gonna get at this just with dollars. You just can't throw money at it. You're not gonna get at it just as Hazleton. You have to take a regional comprehensive community approach. And I think the, busy, the, the, the biggest success story has been community engagement. Over a thousand people have participated in our forums. Four subcommittee groups have been formed. The Public Policy Institute and Economic Development Organization is directing that as an administrator. Uh, and we have been able to change the law. I mean, and I, and I think the bipartisan nature of the initiative and the fact that the community has been so behind it has, has, has made that success possible. And certainly we did not expect to be that successful in a year and a half. We have had training programs, new training programs in our school that are already producing results. Or are you gonna root out, and that's something uh, Dr. Dones let us know up front. You're not gonna get rid of every gang member. You're not gonna stop every crime. But this is about a comprehensive community approach that's going to set a new standard, that we are going to be active and engaged. He told us from the very beginning, you want to give gangs a foothold? Deny that they exist. Apathy. Be apathetic and say, well, there's not one thing that we can do about it. They're going to, drugs are going to be sold. Drugs are going to be purchased. Congressman Barletta, Representative Tuhill, along with the Luzerne County delegation, we all got together. We believe we can make a difference and we believe we are making a difference. You know, you said you, there's just two issues here, two th not issues, but concerns I have. The punishment, okay, of, of particular drug dealers, um, uh, where some, some lenient judges are, are just slapping the hands of these people. As you can see, the arrogance when they get arrested, they, you know, they're smiling, they're smirking after they probably destroyed so many people's lives with their drugs. Uh, really understanding that, well, I'll be out in a month or I'll be out in two months or three months, okay? Has the legislator, uh, ad legislation addressed the punishment end, okay? As, uh, in other words, no more slaps in the hand. Right. You do this, bingo, you're, you're done for five, ten years, so the punishment is there. You don't have to have that fear factor. Well, that, one of the things that from our, from our public forums, when it became clear, you know, our district attorney, here in Luzerne County, District Attorney in, in Carbon County and throughout the, the Commonwealth, the District Attorney Association said we don't even have a, an anti-gang law in the books so that when we arrest that gang member who's selling drugs in our schools and in our neighborhoods, we don't have the tools to enhance the penalties. And we changed that, working with Senator Dominic Pileggi, uh, who's the majority leader of the Senate, a Republican from Chester County, who used to be the mayor of Chester, who, who are recognizing that as the gangs are being pushed out of our urban areas like Philadelphia or New York, they're being pushed into our suburban areas, Chester, Delaware County, Luzerne County, Lackawanna County. So working together, again, in that bipartisan fashion, we changed law, Act 200, signed by the governor uh, this year down at Harrisburg Area Community College. I happened to, to be with the governor to sign that, uh, that legislation. It'll toughen the penalties, and for the first time in Pennsylvania, it is going to make it a crime to recruit juveniles Fabulous. into gang members. So that if yeah. even if you're just simply going out and trying to coerce, yep. forcibly coerce a child, a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, uh, to join a gang, we're going to put you away. I think that's fabulous. You know, before I go to break, you talked about apathy. You know, many probably when you grew up, uh, which was maybe about 60 years ago, because I know you're an old man, um, no, when you grew up, you know, whatever your neighbors did, people said, look, whatever my neighbors do, that's none of my business. I have to mm -hmm. take care of here. That doesn't work anymore. No. You have to be concerned about all your neighbors, who's living in your neighborhood, who they are. What, it's unfortunate, but you need to keep an eye out. And, and technology. The last forum that we had here uh, in Hazleton, and, and again, Chief DeAndre did a, did a great job in, in informing the community. Keep, keep your porch light on. And technology is amazing. You can take a, 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 with your phone, you can take a picture oh, yes. or yeah. record. Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to physically get involved, 
to stop the crime. You could email that or text that anonymously to the police department and say, we have activity, we have drugs being sold uh, near the school or in our neighborhoods. You become that force multiplier. Then it's not just that, that cop on the beat. That's that whole neighborhood protecting that neighborhood and that's, protecting that's, their families. That's very interesting. I, I, I didn't think of that with the phone, you know, with technology there. You could take a picture, send it to uh, the police department. They have Crime Watch apps. They yeah. have all those kind of things. Wow. That's social media. Yeah. And they're, they're doing it. They're, they're really on the cutting edge in Philadelphia. We're going to take a trip down uh, to take a look at their system, how social media, how a community like a Crime Watch group can be so powerful uh, in helping our police as they're understaffed and, and under-resourced that that community, that force multiplier, can, can go a long way to, to, uh, to improving the public safety in our, in our cities. Folks, I'm talking to Senator John Yudichak. If you want to contact a good senator, it's very simple. It's called SenatorYudichak.com. Uh, and we come back, we'll talk about a number of things, the, the, some of the concerns in the state of Pennsylvania, how it affects you. In the greater Hazleton area, there's a $20 million development announced for downtown Hazleton. Uh, and then also there's a lot of things happening in the um, Nanticoke area. And as you know, we're now playing the show, the Sam LaSanne show, uh, in the uh, Kingston, Wilkes-Barre, Mountaintop area. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm welcoming all you viewers and thank you for uh, requesting that we start showing our, our shows on the Service Electric Cable Channel 19. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Sancho, folks. Remember, 24-7 for all you viewers in the uh, kingston Wilkesbury Mountaintop area, we're on ssptv.com, where you can check every one of our shows. And now, folks, we're streaming 24-7. So anywhere you can just go to your computer and watch everything we're doing at any point in time. I want to say hi to a lot of my friends in Afghanistan who have been watching us and also... Um, uh, friends of mine in, in Florida and California, I appreciate all the nice comments. Uh, it's nice to keep in touch. My guest, no stranger to Sam Sancho, Senator John Yudichak, the father of three girls, <clears throat> and uh, he should be in good shape now um, because they're going to have him like this, folks. Uh, Senator, the state of Pennsylvania, uh, a couple things happening. Well, let's talk about Hazleton first. We recently were very happy and excited because, you know, I'm here in downtown Hazleton, and recently my wife and I purchased this building. <coughs> Uh, and we made a major investment in our community, and uh, now there's this development. So uh, many people are aware of it, but where did you and come into the picture here? Sure. W one, thank you and your wife for making that investment. Anyone that makes an investment in, in, in their home region, invests in a downtown, uh, need to be applauded. And, and the DBI, uh, the location of the DBI's world headquarters, the Broad Street, uh, a lot of thanks has to go out to the D'Angelo family, to the Hayden family, George, George Hayden and the D'Angelo brothers uh, making a commitment to their community. Of course, the Hayden family did it a few years back with the Morical Building uh, and proved that an investment uh, in downtown Hazleton uh, can work. I mean, they're, they're nearly at 80 percent occupancy yes. when, uh, when that was unheard of when, when he made that, that first investment. And now to attract a company of the stature of DBI, I mean, 1,200 employees worldwide. Uh, they're in the Middle East. They're in they're in Europe. They're they're in Canada. Uh, they could place their headquarters anywhere they wanted, uh, it, it, but they decided because their 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 faith and their family is here uh, in Hazleton, and they made that investment. Uh, you know, over 20 million dollar investment that'll really be a catalyst to additional uh job creation in the downtown we have the broad street corridor investment happening you're going to have a new streetscape of your of your downtown you're going to have a new world headquarters you're going to have a new sam lucent uh, building that investment begets other investment and and it's so important that the state incentives that we're able to put together with the city and the city cooperation with the county government bringing all those levels of government to creating jobs creating opportunity and creating investments in, in, in our core cities, core cities like Hazleton, Wilkes-Barre. We just announced a great project in Wilkes-Barre, the Coal Street Corridor uh, investment, a $14 million investment tying the communities of Wilkes-Barre Township and Wilkes-Barre City uh, together. And, and you had mentioned Nanny Coke, where we just announced Geisinger, who is one of Pennsylvania's largest employers with over 18,000 uh, employees doing a $4 million project in Nanny Coke. Uh, uh, piggybacking on the success that we've had with the community college. I know you played a, a, an instrumental role in the success in, in the early days of the community college. That's turning Nanny Coke City around. Oh, yes. We have the Health Science Center, yeah. Culinary Arts Center, and now <coughs> uh, Geisinger Health System is coming in and being part of that kind of edge and meds, they call it. education institutions with healthcare institutions 
creating jobs and opportunity, and we're, we're happy to be a part of it. In the state of Pennsylvania, we have a couple issues, I, a lot of key issues, but I mean some things that we're addressing right now that, um, you know, uh, the Marcellus Shale is, is certainly in some areas booming, like Williamsport and the Monroe uh, counties. I mean, they're, they're uh, booming like crazy. Um, and there's money being spilled over. I understand now the state has additional money. How will that money be distributed? Well, the Marcellus <coughs> Legacy Fund, which we, we've had the first year, which was about 200, a little over 200 million, uh, that will be distributed primarily to those local counties. Uh, if you recall, and I, I in the end could not support uh, the package supported by the governor, uh, I was in favor of a severance tax, a responsible severance tax as uh, virtually every other uh, gas producing uh, state in the union has a severance tax, including uh, conservative states like Texas, Wyoming, uh, Arkansas, uh, they have a severance tax. It's a more responsible way. The convoluted way that we did in Pennsylvania was it was up to the individual county. If you wanted to impose a fee, <coughs> you can impose the fee. The lion's share of that fee will go back to you, and, and that's what's happening. Now, I, I think that makes it difficult to do what you and I would like to do, translate that natural gas, uh, that boom in natural gas, to all 67 counties to do things like we had talked with the Rich family where we are we're going to get our vehicles. We all know we have to get it into the vehicles. We have to get uh, off our dependence on four and we're getting there on the back of natural gas. I mean some studies now say we can get there by 2020. When we first started talking about coal gasification or now natural gas, uh, liquid natural gas in our vehicles, we didn't dream it could be that quick. But Marcellus Shale has changed that. It could be transformational, but I think we're missing an opportunity. That $200 million, and like I said, the lion's share goes back, only $20 million, only $20 million out of that $200 million over the next three years will be spent or invested in building out Pennsylvania's natural gas market. There's no question uh, the, oil, the oil and gas companies are going to find a market for this natural gas but I want them to find a Pennsylvania market. They're going to find a European, Asian market, but we need to build out our infrastructure so that our vehicles, our fleet vehicles, uh, waste management, which is doing a great job, they're about 80% of their vehicles, their entire, are natural gas now. UPS uh, is in the same boat. We need to continue to do more and more of that so that the jobs are created not just in where, the, uh, where, the, uh, where the rigs are, just in those counties that have natural gas, we need, we need to spread that across all of Pennsylvania. Is your district getting any money? Very little. Very little. Very little. Luzerne County, in fact, you mentioned Monroe, Monroe County doesn't have any drilling. Luzerne County oh, they doesn't, don't. Have any, no, okay. doesn't have any uh, drilling. Oh. It's the northern tier. Like I'm sorry. Bradford, Brad, I'm sorry. Bradford uh, yeah. Susquehanna, <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> in, in Wyoming counties. But, you know, to give you a good... Monroe's not involved with that. Uh, no, because they're part of the Delaware uh, okay. River Basin, right. so they haven't, haven't allowed it. But to give you a good example... You know, Route 118, a state route, comes, you know, through those gas-producing counties mm -hmm. and through Luzerne County. Well, you know, w those trucks don't pick up the tires when they come into a non-gas drilling county. There's still impact on the road and on the infrastructure, the bridges. Uh, and, Not even and a percentage comes to us? We get a small percent, and I, I want to say in the neighborhood uh, of, you know, uh, less than $100,000. Yeah. Uh, and so the impact uh, is, is tremendous, but I really think we're missing the opportunity of economic development. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what the Rich family had envisioned uh, and John Rich, I, I mean, those are the kind of visionary business leaders that we need that are going to make investments to create thousands of jobs. And, and, there, and there's, there's a classic case, John, of, uh, and I've been involved with John Rich since, since 1999, uh, and there's a classic case of the politicians the political nonsense that John had to go through, and I and I hats off to them many times. He sat where you sat, explained the things, and then you know, John, you hear stupid things that really tick me off. You know, when they say, "Well, he's gonna become a millionaire. He's gonna become a zillionaire." I said to him, sitting here, John, I don't become. I don't care if you become a czar. It doesn't make any difference to me. You're creating thousands of jobs. You're you're doing something. You're you're taking coal. You're reducing the dependency on on what's going. And everybody had this fixation. Not everyone. Some people on you know. And now you know he's still progressing. Uh, I think in the northern part of the Pennsylvania start. Um, 
uh, and still pursuing that. But it, it, it was a shame because you and, and Tuhill and Barletta and everyone supported, you know, the efforts of taking coal all clean, all done right, and, and he got involved in this political nonsense. Right. And that's, you know, you have to make, I mean, when we didn't really have an energy investment program, and now that you have uh, the blessings of this, this natural resource, natural gas, yeah. plentiful, yeah. Uh, getting almost that second bite at the apple, that, yeah. the same that we had with anthracite, well, you would think that we'd put together policies to make sure that we have investments uh, in, in businesses uh, like uh, the rich business that would that would create those jobs because yeah. right now, Luzerne, Lackawanna County, that, that it, Hazleton, Wilkes-Barre, and Scranton, for the last two years, 24 straight months, has led the Commonwealth in highest unemployment rate. Yes. And here we are right at the foothills yep. of the Marcellus Shale play. Now, we're going to be putting something together uh, with the Policy Institute in, in, in the spring. They've just done a study and saying that we're, we're, we're not seeing that because there are not policies in place to, to extrapolate the jobs from the well pad to Main Street. So we're going to we're going to start down that path. We're going to put together programs like PA Works, uh, which which is a jobs program that we want to see. Let's take advantage of those resources that we have in Pennsylvania. It's not going to be good enough as we didn't answer simply to export it. We need to create Pennsylvania jobs with that Pennsylvania natural resource. Folks, I'm talking to Senator John Udichak uh, from the 14th Senatorial District in the state of Pennsylvania. We come back. Illegal access cards were found in Hazleton when they did a raid. 19 of them, okay. Uh, what are, what's the state doing about the fraud that's going on? And you know what I'm talking about, folks. You're, you're as disgusted as I am. And about the pension program. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Asan Show for 24-7, folks, SSPTV.com. Welcome, Wilkes-Barre Mountaintop, um, uh, Wilkes Mountaintop and Kingston viewers. Uh, my guest, Senator John Udichak. Hey, Grace, I apologize. I said you had three children. You have four children. Don't get mad at me. Okay, I feel, I feel like Groucho Marx now. I have three kids. So we have four, four girls, okay? So just so I'm on the good good side now, okay? Now forget the twins. Just, just in case you were shopping for yeah. Christmas. Yeah. For no, because if I see you at Grotto, okay, oh. I want to make sure that your wife doesn't get mad at me. All right, look, very quickly. Recently we found, there was a raid here. They found, I don't know, 13, 15, 17 illegal access card, plus all those paraphernalia. What's the state doing to cramp down uh, on, the, on the fraud that's going well, on? Well, we there? did... Two things. Act 22, which I supported, uh, there was only a handful of Democrats, and there's still a lot of folks that w were unhappy about Act 22. But that gave the Secretary of Welfare extraordinary power to go after waste and fraud. And in many respects, they did. And there were some dollars saved. They also went after very viable, healthy programs that we have concerns about. We're going to take a look at just how much waste and fraud they got out versus how many healthy programs they went after. The other thing was uh, Senate Bill 9, which I supported. I believe it was Senator Scarnati, the Republican president pro tem. You have to prove citizenship to get an access card. That's the law. I mean, that's, that's where we need to be to make sure, because to me, and, and it happened just a few years back in Beaver Meadows, as you recall, there was a, a, an illegal uh, alien that was arrested, had two access cards, uh, thousands of dollars in, in, in cash. You are taking advantage, not only of, of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but taking advantage of those senior citizens or those that are in need, those that need that benefit. Uh, and so you are, in, in essence, defrauding the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and stealing from that senior citizen. We can't let that happen. So something's being done about it. Let's yeah. move on very quickly to the pension program because pension is going to be a serious problem. We've got about a minute left. The pension system uh, is unsustainable in, in Pennsylvania back in 2001. Uh, I voted against the expansion of uh, the, benef the benefit for state workers, for legislators, for judges. I didn't accept the 50% the increase. Uh, I stayed at the pension multiplier that I was elected. As a result of that vote and as a result of the Great Recession and 9-11 and underfunding our pensions, we have a $41 billion unfunded pension liability. That is going to bankrupt school districts. It's going to bankrupt the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania unless we do something about it. Back in 2010, I voted to roll back those benefits uh, to 2001 levels. Uh, that was a big first step, but we're, ne we're going to need to do more. It's going to be a big issue in this year's budget. I suspect that we'll get a new pension reform package uh, in June before we pass the, uh, the 2013 budget. That is a challenge, my friend. That is a big challenge. Uh, Senator, it's always nice seeing you. Thank you. And tell the four kids I said hi.
and Have great, a great holiday. Oh, you Thank too. You. Merry Christmas to you. Folks, Senator John Yudichak, remember you can go on his website, senatoryudichak.com. Folks, get in touch with me, uh, Sam at ssptv.com. That's Sam at ssptv.com. Please send me your comments, your suggestions. Yes, folks, I read all the emails. I, I know I don't get back to as many as I could, but I appreciate them very much. And don't forget ssptv.com uh, where you can watch all of our shows. And we're streaming now 24-7. Anytime you want to watch us anywhere in the world, just uh, tune us in and we're there for you. We'll see you next time.